Hey guys, Solomon here. I hope you're having a great day. Today's video, we are covering one of the most underrated chess openings for black in all of chess. I'm not joking when I say that. I've had students who have gained hundreds of rating points by playing this chess opening system, and you can get it by playing the Carl Kahn defense, and you can also reach it in some cases by playing the Scandinavian defense, but up a tempo. Okay, so if you're a Carl Kahn defense player, if you are a Scandinavian defense player, you definitely want to watch this video to the end. You're going to get some great ideas, themes, motives, all that kind of good stuff that can help you in your own games. And if you're a French defense player, you might want to think about switching. Okay, I'm not here to ruffle feathers, okay, and say the French defense is terrible. It's a very good opening. In fact, many E4 players, including myself, for years, uh, hated playing against it. Okay, and if, if people get annoyed by an opening, guess what? It means it's good. Okay, but... All that to say, this does have some benefits that the French defense simply does not have and vice versa, right? The French defense, as you guys are going to see, has a potential benefit as well. So let's take a look at the starting position. What are we doing here? Okay, well, we have this move of E4, okay? Now, the official line starts out with the Carl Kahn defense where we play C6 and D5. Now, the question is, what do we do with the advanced variation? Okay, for, for years when I was when I was a kid, I was playing this move of Bishop F5 and I got absolutely toasted, when I played this, it was not good. Okay. It was not good. Okay. I, I mean, I, did I win a game? I don't even know. Okay. It was one of those openings where I just got absolutely, um, humbled every time I went with it. Okay. So it actually made me quit the Carl Kahn defense. I saw that move Bishop F5. I saw that it was the main line and grandmasters played it and it was the right thing to do. Did I like it? Did I like the positions I was studying? Did I like the books I was reading? No, but I knew that a lot of good players, including, you know, uh, top GMs, really you know did well with it and it was the right move according to the engine um uh you know one of the right moves at least so i went with that okay but i got crushed turns out the best move according to the engine c5 and that's exactly what we're going to be covering today with the botvinik carl's defense now i mentioned earlier okay i mentioned earlier the Scandinavian defense. Now, how does this relate at all? Well, guess what? If you see E4 and you play the Scandinavian defense, some of you guys might see E5. Quite a few of my students, by the way, if you guys are interested in private chess lessons, I do get private chess lessons. And I'll leave a link down in the description below. Hit me up and I'll get back to you uh, about, you know, availability and rates and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I love coaching. That's what I do full time. And um, I'm excited about the potential, uh, you know, prospect of coaching you as well and helping you improving your chess game. So all I have to say, a lot of my students, they see this move E5. I don't really see this at my level hardly at all because it's honestly not that good. But yeah, I mean, E5 does happen. And a lot of times my students wonder what to do with this move. I love this move of C5. Okay. And guess what? We have a similar position. I'm going to go back to the Bob and at Carl's defense. Okay. This is Bob and at Carl's. This is what you get after the Scandinavian against the advance. What's the difference? The difference is that white's pawn went from D4 to D2. I'm not saying the Scandinavian defense is better. In fact, when you play D5, they could just take the pawn. They could play knight C3. They could play D4. There's a lot of moves. But if you do see this move E5, C5 is highly worth considering. And these ideas that you see in this video, if you're a Scandi player, you can use in your own games, but you're also going to be up a tempo. Okay. So, all right, we go back. We have this move E4. We start out with the Carl Kahn. And now we play this move c5 now some of you guys and for a good reason might be wondering okay why on earth didn't we just play the french defense because in the french defense we have the same position but the pawn's here well what if we don't want the pawn there okay one of my private students uh adam safer uh you know i've probably mentioned him about five to ten times on this channel already just off of this comment but it stuck with me i mean i asked him why don't you just play the french and he said i don't want this pawn on e6 i want it back here I feel like this is an improved French because my bishop can get out. And um, that's the biggest benefit that this has over the French. What does the French have? The, the benefit that the French has is that this pawn is defended in this position. The benefit that the Boffin at Carl's defense has is that this bishop oftentimes gets very active in the game. And we get a French, but without the French bishop, right? So that's pretty big. Now we're going to go over a few moves here. As y'all can see, we're making this D4 pawn a target, and it's going to stay that way for the rest of this game. This move of C3 is pretty pretty common. Okay, this is the most popular move online, so we are going to look at it. Uh, you know, so we're going to look at that. We're also going to look at okay, what happens if you know uh, White defends the pawn with a move like Knight of Three, uh, and we're finally going to look at what happens if they take the pawn on C5. Now, again, this performs very well online. Okay, Black has a winning percentage on Lee Chess with this. 
Okay. Every single, they put every single game that's ever been played in this position. And guess what? Black wins more. Okay. So white has a very hard time with this. And I've spoken to people personally that say they have a hard time with this kind of thing. And, and personally, the reason I don't play E5 as white against the Karo is because I don't want to face this. So there you go. But all right, let's cover this move with C3. Okay. I've been hyping it up long enough. Let's get into it. C3. So yeah, I mean, that pawn's defended. What do we do here? We're going to keep putting pressure on that pawn. We're going to play this move of knight C6. And, and if you get anything from this video, okay, two ideas, keep putting pressure on D4, right? And pin the knight on F3 the moment you can. Okay. Like in this case, if you see knight f3, there's actually a couple different moves here. Um, we could take on d4, right? We could also just play bishop g4 right away, okay? But I first want to cover the question of, you know, what happens if white doesn't let us pin the knight? Okay, pinning the knight is a great option. It gets rid of the French bishop. It puts pressure on a defending piece of that pawn on d4. But what happens if they just don't let us do it? Well, according to the engine, this is just dead even. Okay. Now I know earlier I talked about how much I hate this move of Bishop F five, but in this case it's pretty solid. Okay. It's a pretty solid move. Um, because of this C three move as well. And the pressure that you have on D four, this is a much different feel than the regular Carl Kahn. And, uh, you're slicing the dice all the way down to B one. If a move like that, F three, you push your pawn up, um, you know, you can take on D four, you can play knight E seven. You're just going to develop here. Okay. As we're going to see in this video, uh, black is really looking to develop their pieces especially their queen side pieces and i mean let's say here we have a move like castling king side okay we can play a6 right if if you want to run back that's fine bishop e4 is actually a pretty good move attacking one of the defenders of d4 and the next move we have the option of putting more pressure on this pawn now some of you guys might be wondering what's the big deal here well the big deal is that we have two attacking pieces on that pawn white has two defending pieces and we're attacking a defender so if we can get rid of this knight and then capture on d4 we're going to be up in material okay not to mention that this pawn on e5 is going to be more weak um out of a situation like that if white wants to keep just clamping down holding on to that pawn for dear life okay we'll develop right bishop e7 castle kingside um you know rook c8 is always a good move to throw in there uh we're chilling all right and if a move like knight takes e4 we take back the moment this knight moves I mean, we got, we now got three pieces coming down on D4 white, uh, white's in trouble here. White's in trouble. Stockfish agrees. So, okay. All that to say, right. We, we go back to knight C6 white can play a move like H3. Okay. Is it going to happen? Not that often. Okay. And if it does happen, it probably means that they've been getting, you know, the butt kicked by the Bishop G4 pinning the knight thing. But okay. Let's say we see a move like knight F3, which is going to happen way more than them not letting you do this. The moment you see that knight. You could, you have two choices, pin the knight right away or take and then pin the knight. Okay. Now, first off, let's just say we pin the knight. Okay. There's nothing wrong with this, right? Just pin the knight right out the gate. Okay. Here, let's say, you know, white plays a move like Bishop E2. We can take more of a slow approach here. All right. In fact, we can allow the opponent multiple opportunities to take on C5. Notice just how strong this pawn chain is. I mean, it's really the biggest thing that white has going for them in this game. And the moment that you take on c5, there's a little bit of a break, right? In the center of the board, the chain's weaker, their pawns are weaker. We're going to start picking them off like candy and going after them for the rest of this game. Let's say white keeps the pawn structure together. Okay. We can, you know, there's a lot of moves that we have here. We can take on f3. We could take on d4. We could even play knight e7. And um, we're just going to continue to to try and develop and activate our pieces, specifically our queen side. Now our king, has our king castled yet? No, but that's okay. Our king is very safe, okay? In this structure with these locked up pawns, the king is very safe. We're really trying to put pressure on d4 as much as we possibly can, all right? We have ideas like knight f5, okay? We have ideas here um, like taking the pawn. We have ideas like queen b6, rook c8. We're eyeing up the knight on f3. Let's say you do take the pawn on c5. Is, is white just up upon here? Is white winning? No, we're going to take that knight off, capture the pawn on e5. And uh, in a position like this, you can really go either way. I mean, you can go to c6, you can go to g6. I would probably go to g6 personally. Uh, really helps this knight, uh, you know, kind of stamp its uh, presence in the middle of the board. And on top of that, this guy um, is looking at king side dark squares as well. Going back, the one downside or, or potential downside, 
right? It could also be an upside depending on your preference is that if you do play bishop g4 without taking this pawn first, white could just snatch this thing off right away. Now, if you do get this position, please, 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 please. I don't know how many times I got to say it. Please don't take this, this pawn on e5 right now. Okay. This might just seem like, okay, we're even a material. They got double pawns. We're putting, no. Okay. This is what's going to happen if, if they know what to do. They're going to take your knight. They're up a piece now. And when you take the queen, guess what? They have check. You have to give up your queen. They're going to take the queen. And then in this position, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Stockfish likes this move of C6. If this is not a computer move, I don't know what is. Um, you know, that's one of the top moves there for white. But okay, if I was white, I'd probably just take the take the pawn on F7 with check. Make sure that I can take this rook, right? Make sure that I can take this rook. But notice, which, which piece is trapped? Is the bishop trapped or is the rook, right? Which, which piece kind of has, has a longer clock in terms of when we can take it. Well, we can kind of take the rook whenever we want. The bishop, however, can run away. So let's take the piece that can run away. The next move, white takes the rook. They're about to be plus nine in material. This is not good. Okay, so if you see d takes c5 in this kind of position, don't take the pawn, please. Play a move like e6, right? Play a move like e6, just start going for that pawn on c5, uh, you know, looking at this guy here and look if you if you take that pawn back and you just get easy development from there and white kind of has a pawn on e5 doing a whole bunch of nothing but being a big old target we'll take it now if you do see a move here like b4 white trying for dear life to hang on to their pawn which is probably the best attempt they have um i would i would recommend just taking taking that knight there you know taking this pawn off on e5 and okay i mean if we see a check that's fine you can go back you can play a move like bishop e7 um and notice too white is castled white does have decent development okay they got four pieces developed we have um two now that can catch up the moment we castle because we're going to get two for one but in this scenario white has also pushed their pawns like crazy okay and they're a little bit underdeveloped on the queen side their, their queen side's underdeveloped our king side is underdeveloped in this case we can try to take advantage of that and play bishop f6 just just putting some pressure on the opponent, right? Just just activating our, our minor piece. And here for a move like Bishop F4, right? We got to play aggressive here. Okay. I you know you could play a move like 97. I would probably recommend A5 though. Go after this pawn right away. If you want to take on A5, you're gonna have two sets of double isolated pawns, four isolated pawns in total. And um if you play a move like A3, guess what we take? You can't take with the A pawn because the rook falls, and you can't take with the C pawn because of this nice little bishop move that we have white again is in some trouble all right so all that to say okay we play this move 96 if you see knight f3 up to you you can pin that knight right away which kind of allows white multiple opportunities to take on c5 and if you like those kind of positions great you could also take on d4 and then the very next move right by the way if a move like knight takes d4 i mean thanks for the pawn okay queen takes d4 thanks for the queen and if c takes d4 let's pin the knight now right pin the knight here you can play a move like e6, okay? And um, yeah, just develop from here. Knight g e7. Uh, and white has to play with a pretty high level of accuracy. Now, if a move like h3 is played, for example, we take the knight and a key idea here, queen b6. We're double attacking this pawn. The only way that they can save that pawn, the only way white cannot go down material is by playing bishop e3. And guess what? They still go down material. We're still up a pawn. Uh, if we move like knight d2, knight f5, if rook b1, let's take the take the pawn there. This might seem poisoned, but remember, we're still up a pawn. Here we have a move like bishop b4. We have a lot of ideas here, including knight takes e3, removing the defender of d2, and then simply capturing off that knight. We have this idea of queen a6 going after this rook that's kind of a little bit trapped right now. And Stockfish gives the edge to black. Okay, so white has to be very careful in how to defend this pawn. If they just play a move like h3, we take the knight and then play queen b6. Notice, by the way, guys, I've been developing without taking this knight. Okay, I like to give white some opportunities, some chances, much of the time at least, to play h3. Okay, I only take on f3 um, if it means that I'm going to win this pawn on d4 or if it means that their pawns are going to get messed up. Um... But okay, I mean, you know, we're developing and uh, white needs to be very specific on how to defend that. Okay, let's say a move like knight d2 is played all of a sudden, right? If we take, white kind of just replaces their knight. Let's play queen b6. Let's start piling up pressure on that pawn. Let's say a move like h3 is played here. You could take, but again, you're just going to get a replacement. In fact, the queen's going to come in as well. 
you could play a move like bishop f5 that works i kind of prefer bishop h5 just to you know keep some pressure on this diagonal at the very least knight b3 online is pretty popular in that case we can take play a5 try to kick that knight which by the way is defending this this pawn on d4 and uh, if a move like knight c5 white trying to play aggressively here there's a lot of different things you can do you can go with knight f5 you could also just take this pawn and then play knight c6 now we're down a piece for a pawn but you got to move your queen you got to move it somewhere and uh, the moment you do we take back we're simply up in material okay so all I have to say, we play the move c5. If a move like c3, just build pressure, right? Play a move like knight c6. The moment you see this knight come out, either pin the knight right away or take and then pin that knight. Okay, don't waste time. And remember, we're trying to play a French defense-like position, but without the French bishop, okay? Now, by the way, if you guys haven't heard of the French bishop, it's referring to a bishop that is simply stuck, okay? Like, for example, I'll, I'll do this. So this, this, this bishop's good, right? It's on opposite colors of its pawn, so it can see very far. This bishop is the French bishop, right and in, in terms of the pawn structure because it's very limited okay so we want to get that bishop out before we play e6 and continue our development the number one thing we got to prioritize is pressure 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 against that pawn on d4 let's go back to this move c5 what else could we see knight f3 is a move now here you could take the same approach you could take the same approach in fact i would probably recommend it knight c6 bishop g4 e6 get this knight involved right queen b6 rook c8 very straightforward game plan for for black the the ceiling right for black to make mistakes is actually pretty high uh, we can make you know a little you know some inaccuracies i'm not recommending it but for white you got to play accurately here white their margin for error is very small it's a very uncomfortable position in many cases and black oftentimes just gets winning positions so that's one thing you could do. You could just take the normal approach. You could also take this pawn on d4. Okay, that is an option because you're taking a center pawn with your flank pawn. And let's say we go with a move like knight c6 here attacking the queen. The knight gets pinned. You could play a move like e6. Tuck the knight, bishop d7. Just develop your pieces here. The second that this knight is not pinned, you're attacking the queen. Stockfish likes this position for black, although I'll be honest, it feels a little cramped. And it feels like we're not so... I don't know we're not so aimed in our focus okay in the previous positions we were really going after that pawn on d4 um we made white waste time by taking our pawn and then going after that c pawn as well and if they want to hold on to the c pawn they got to keep pushing pawns right to basically to keep saving their pawns they got to keep making more pawn weaknesses in this case i mean i don't know queen e3 or something and I, i'm just not super excited about the position but it's still fine i mean it's very playable slight advantage to black according to the engine so if you like this there's nothing wrong with that at all okay so right if you see me like knight of three you could do the same old thing or you could take that pawn on d4 that that's an option now what do we do if they take on c5 this is a big question you have a couple of different options all right if you plug it into stockfish stockfish is going to tell you e6 all right why okay why well first off there's only a point one when i'm looking at it right now there's only a point one three point oh four very very small difference between e6 and knight c6 okay so you know when it when it, especially when it comes to opening theory but also for the rest of the game if you made a move and it wasn't the best move but it was like point zero two under the computer move but you liked it more you made the best move you made the right move okay we're human beings we don't play like engines and um you know unless you see that little double question mark or a single question mark in some instances on that chess.com review you're you're fine okay you're fine don't worry don't sweat it Knight c6 is a move here let's go over this first we're attacking that pawn right if you play a move like knight of three bishop g4 this kind of looks like the same old thing that we've been doing okay bishop b5 in this case um i do want to be careful to not play a move like e6 because of b4 and we can't take that because the knight's pinned so what i would say here is queen a5 would check make this knight come out so that we don't just win that bishop play a move here like e6 now you're going after this pawn b4 is no longer an option because of our queen on a5 and uh when you defend it let's just develop you know and here you can actually castle queen side this does very well online crazy idea when i first saw it i was a little bit shocked but the idea here is that you are trying to pull off a d4 push okay for example let's say white plays a3 or something trying to kick our queen around all right d4 we have a fork okay let's say white you know they can't take with the knight because they they lose their queen let's say they take with the bishop okay we take with the knight all of a sudden we're attacking their their knight on f3 their bishop and the rook is also aimed towards the queen and the bishop's also aimed towards the queen let's say the bishop tries to hold on to everything okay we take on f3 we win your queen um we start trading down like crazy i mean this is just this is just 
straight winning. So we go back um, again to knight c6. This is an option. I just wanted to mention that if you do see bishop e5, white might be trying to pull off this move. I actually had a private student recently who their opponent tried this kind of thing. If you see bishop b 5 throw in a check, right? Force knight c3, and, um, and that's going to help you. Uh, that's really going to help you be able to attack c5 without more reinforcements coming in that you can't go after, okay? Um, and, and another thing to be mindful of as well, right? Let's say we played e6 and then b4 was played. Some of you guys might be wondering, why not a5? a5 is actually a really good move there. But notice, when we do play a5, the bishop can't get kicked. That bishop is chilling, okay? We can't kick that bishop around. Um, white defends. That's why I don't like this line as much, personally. Um, sure, we go up to this pawn, but now, now the bishop is just rock solid and it's chilling. So I recommend queen a5 would check there. Going back, okay? We're going to go back all the way to c5, okay? Let's say they take one option that we have, as we've covered, right? This move in c6. e6 is also a move here. Okay, now by doing this, we're immediately going after that pawn. If the bishop comes out defending it, okay, let's play knight d7. Boom, we got two threats, right? Bishop b5 pinning our knight, knight e7. What's going on here? It might, you know, if I if someone walks by this board, they might be going, oh my gosh, black messed this up. I mean, white's got their bishops out. They're throwing their knight into the action. Black has tucked knights. One of them are pinned. Guess what? We play this move knight of five. We have a quality, if not better. We're attacking this bishop, which is a key defender of that pawn. If you play b4 to keep hanging on to it, here we can play a6 to kick that bishop back a little bit. If you want to take, I mean, that's fine with me. I'll just take back with my minor piece. And if you play bishop a4, I can take that bishop off the board. You now have double isolated pawns. I'm going to continue going after your pawns. And um, it's pretty interesting. In one sense, when I look at this position, I'm kind of like, okay, white's up a pawn, and it seems like they're holding it. On the other hand... I think practically speaking, I mean, if I'm white, there's just a lot of stuff that I got to be worried about for the rest of this game that, that black can pretty easily attack at certain points, right? Um, you know, especially my pawn structure with all this pressure. So, you know, it's a little bit double-edged. Stockfish likes it for black. Uh, but okay, we take this pawn on b4, and I wanted to mention this idea, okay? You know, a3 there doesn't really do, do it for white. It doesn't fix everything because we take... The only move here that gives an advantage to black, b5. Okay, beautiful move. Um, if you move the bishop anywhere, thank you for the rook. And if you use the role of en passant, which is the computer recommendation, we're going to take on b4 or check. Um, c3, let's reroute and just start going after those pawns. Knight over. I would take this pawn, but then I'd get checked and I'd lose my rook. So I'm just going to slide that rook over one square. We're down a pawn, but this pawn ain't going to make it. And then from that point, white has... An isolated pawn, double isolated pawns, and we have a single pawn chain with no weaknesses to speak of. So going back to this original position, okay, I mean, the Baffin at Carl's defense is, is, a, is a great opening for black. It, it performs very well. I've had students that have been very successful with it. I've got great games with it. Um, and it's hard to play against, especially when you haven't been studying for it. Um, I think a lot of players play advanced variations against something like the Scandinavian defense or the Carl Kahn because they don't want to study theory, but they're kind of going to have to. Okay. Once you start playing C5 a lot and, um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of rich ideas there. Um, just remember, right. You, you, you want to develop your pieces, right. But, but the main objective is actually not to castle super fast. The main objective here is to put pressure on D4. And by doing so, you're going to either win the pawn on D4 or make white play very accurate chess to hang on to it. Your King's very safe similar to the hippo in the hippo a lot of times you don't have to castle right away in this line of this in of the carl con with the bot at carl's defense same thing applies your king's very safe with that locked up pawn structure um you know the biggest thing there is that you got to go after that pawn on t4 and when you see that knight come out pin that knight um, or take the pawn and then pin it that's huge uh, because that's a key defender of that pawn maybe the most important one and if they prevent you right if they prevent you from playing bishop g4 you still have bishop f5 bishop e4 a lot of rich ideas there um, let me know down below, right? If you've played this opening, if you played against it, what your thoughts are on it. If you have thoughts, if you have questions, if you have critiques, um, I want to hear what you guys think about this. I, uh, you know, I've been making opening videos for a while. And one of the coolest things about it is getting to talk with you guys, right? Um, talk with you guys, see what your thoughts are on the theory, see your approaches to things. Um, as y'all can see, or probably know by this point, I'm uh, I'm a little more on the offbeat side, right? I don't like to play uh, mainline stuff all the time. 
I like the kind of offbeat but rare and dangerous openings over the main line. Roy Lopez over the main line. Queen's Gambit, right? No offense to the Queen's Gambit opening, by the way. I know it's very good. Um, but I mean, and, and we, we go over stuff like that too, right? I mean, we've, we've gone over the Queen's Gambit. We've, um, you know, I have a video way back in the day on the Roy Lopez and it's pretty bad in all honesty. It's like bad audio and bad tone of speech. And yeah, I've been trying to work on it, um, over time. So all that to say, uh, let me know what you thought of this, right? Let me know, um, how it goes. If you decide to uh, play more games with it, and I'm wishing you guys a great day, a great week, a great month, a great 2024, a great everything. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of February in 2024. Uh, you guys have been amazing. I'm, I'm extremely blessed to have you guys uh, as part of the Patreon family. There's exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member. Um, so, you know, I, I highly recommend that you check it out and consider it. It's been great to, you know, hang out and get to know the patrons uh, that have joined thus far. And I hope to see you there soon. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.